For anyone that lives in the Northeast and has been dealing with this weather pattern we've been in since late spring, early summer, you'd know that we've just had extremely difficult weather to get offshore to tuna fish. Persistent southerly winds, lots of fog, just generally difficult to find a weather window that you could comfortably run offshore in a smaller boat. And being that I run a 27-foot Onslow Bay center console, in the world of offshore fishing boats, that's pretty small. So we need good weather to get out. I don't feel like getting beat up. But it's just been a very difficult uh, weather pattern we've been in. So I know I haven't posted a ton of videos lately. Hopefully we get out of this weather pattern going forward and the fishing gets a bit more consistent. But uh, have a watch. Colin and I got into some really nice class of yellowfin. Some of the largest yellowfin we've caught uh, outside of the canyons. And uh, we, got, we got beat up pretty good by them. Finally got a little window, our early part of July, and Colin and I were able to sneak out and uh, see what was going on. Of course, two miles from the numbers we were running to, we got socked in with pea soup fog, made it very difficult to try to locate the life we were looking for. So after wandering around in the fog for a bit, I pointed the bow towards some older waypoints I had, a couple lumps I wanted to check out. Uh, as soon as we pulled in on those lumps, we had all kinds of life, and very shortly thereafter, we got into the yellowfin. You wanna get in the bow? On one of my first blind casts in the area, a nice yellowfin absolutely destroyed my popper and I was off to the races. Oh, dude, it's explosive. I just looked back and saw the white water. Surprisingly, this fish stayed up high in the water column and almost came right to the boat. I wanted to get the camera set up better, so I handed the rod to Colin, but as soon as I moved the GoPro, the fish was at the boat ready to be gaffed. There he is, right, he's right there. Explosive head on the brand new Stella. Thank you, Digitaka. That bite, as they say, worth the admission. Worth the price of admission. Worth the price of admission. Certainly. Needless to say, we were pumped to stumble upon this fish in the fog, so after a quick picture session, we got back up on the drift. We started marking fish almost immediately, and Colin came tight on the jig. What do you need me to do?
Yowza. long after Colin's last fish, he came tight on the jig again, this time to a real demon. I was just about to say, gotta do the Sean Furman uh, line slap. Straight down. Do you see how far that thing swam up? Yeah, so I did it. <coughs> some high 60 to low 70 inch class bluefin around and we think this may have been one of those models. As you'll soon see, we never found out. Nice fish, dude. Depressed from the last lost fish, there wasn't much time to sulk as I got tight to my own jig fish. This fish went through both of us, and of course, at deep color, we had heartbreak once again. You're good, we're just drifting with him. Okay. Wow. 
Determined to not let these fish get the best of us, we got back on the drift. It's like one more, two more turns it would have been up. That thing, dude. <clears throat> oh my god. You got it? Fuck that thing, dude. Shit. Wow. This thing is round. Very round. Must have been hooked pretty good. Yeah. Oh my God. After another marathon fight on the jig, we got this fish to the boat and decided we had enough. Woo! We pointed the bow for home and ran back through the fog. Another great trip in the boats. So watching this video, you'll see it was a lot of, uh, we caught one fish on a popper and mostly everything else was on the jig. So just to quickly go over some of the tackle again, you know, I've had this in some of my other videos. It seems like this year the sand eels are very large. Uh, so we're fishing 120 to 160 gram jigs. Uh, of course, basically anything in that pink glow color seems to work the best. And uh, you'll see here how we're fishing, you know, 120 gram. This is a Nomad streaker jig, uh, pink glow and tie our own assist hooks like to put the little squids on there as a kind of like a teaser and again i've gone over some of this rigging in some of my other videos um but you know fishing this is a black hole 250 gram jig rod uh fishing anywhere in that 200 gram to 300 gram weight uh jigging rod this is a 8000 size twin power uh, ideally, you want to be fishing in that 10,000, you know, to 14,000 range. The 14,000 have the high gear, 10,000 have the lower gear, which is better for jigging. This is an 8,000 high gear, but it actually seems to work pretty well for me jigging wise. And then, uh, in terms of popping rods, of course, you know, my old standby, the Salty Water Tackle El Maestro 77H, is my favorite all around popping rod. This is a Stella 14,000, you know, high gear. It's the XG, give you that better uh, line retrieval rate when you're casting a popper. Um, I like using, on all my reels, I like switching out for the round ball knobs. It just is more comfortable to me than the stock ones. Uh, and again, the fish we had on this trip, once again, as always, the Mad Mantis. Popper. This is a sand eel colored mantis. 
the silver belly, silver white belly and the olive top. Let's see how we how we rig these. You've got a BKK swivel to a split ring. Then this I'm actually using uh, owner ST76 trebles. I usually use the BKK Raptor Z's, but I just happen to have these rigged on this plug and they stayed stuck pretty good.